Hello, my name is Terry Hall and I'm assistant principal at Betsy Lane High School. And today I have with me Mr. Bryn Hamilton, uh, Ms. Patricia Hackworth, Ms. Kelly Akers, Ms. Meredith Campbell, and Ms. Michelle Yancey. And um, this year we looked at um, <laughs> when we started looking at what we were going to do with our grant, we, we talked and we decided that basically it was like Ms. Hackworth said this morning, um, our kids do not do a lot of reading, so therefore they're not good at it. So we wanted to create a school-wide culture of literacy. Uh, we wanted to immerse the whole school in literary activities and so forth so that the students could become better readers. And so we decided we would use our CERT testing, and we test three times a year. So we thought if we could increase our CERT scores by 5% each time, that we would be where we, we would be making progress. We would be where we wanted to be, but we would be making progress. So hopefully by the end of the year, we would be at 15% increase in literacy. And I'll let Mr. Hamilton. Yes, I'm, again, my name is Brent Hamilton, as Ms. Hall said. I'm the Assessment and Accountability Coordinator for our uh, ACT team. And uh, like Ms. Hall was saying, we used our CERT assessments to measure the effectiveness of our literacy initiative. And uh, this slide shows our CERT scores from our fall assessment. And if you will flip over to the next. This PowerPoint kind of got all jumbled up for some reason. but. Um, it's hard to tell by that, but it, uh, we did see substantial increases in our search scores from uh, winter to fall, or from fall to winter. And at the time we made this PowerPoint, we didn't have our spring scores, but I'm told we increased once again in English and reading uh, substantially. So. And next I'll pass it over to Ms. Patricia Hackworth. We want to start talking about some of our literacy activities. Um, Kelly, do you want to talk about trans Yeah. My name is Kelly Akers. I'm one of the social studies teachers at Metzlin High School. And the last so many years, we have hosted an annual Veterans Day program uh, held each year on Veterans Day in November. And this year, we kind of took things a step further since literacy is, is kind of a new motive. And we allowed students to create their own skit and they perform it in front of the entire student body during Veterans Day program. And we also wanted to make sure that each of our veterans, because we always invite the local DAV, um, had something to take home with them. And so our kids made handwritten you know, letters um, just thanking them for their service. It's something we worked on for several days in some of our elective classes. And they also made them cards. And as you can see here in the pictures, this is my classroom and they're making banners and just signs and they just kind of went wild with it and decorated the whole school. Okay, the next thing we did is we took this ACT grant and we, we're also a Strive and Reader school, so we kind of piggybacked those together. And one of the big things that we did was called the Polar Express Night. And what we did is we had, I took some of the early childhood money from Strive and Readers and then we took some of the ACT money and we did a Polar Express night in December in which kids on Friday came in in PJs. Um, I had my National Honor Society and Beta Club kids and each student had a station and they would read a book to the kids. And so we bought 25 books of each one of the stations. <coughs> So you get a Polar Express book at the end of the night after you watch the movie, which is the longest movie ever. <laughs> I mean, we did a bathroom break and I fast forwarded like 30 minutes because they were, they were tired. And we had them all hyped up with hot chocolate. And <laughs> we had, we had um, chocolate chip cookies, hot chocolate, and popcorn. So the kids got a little wired. So yeah, um, it, it was interesting. But we had, if you notice, we've got... Um, tables of books. So we went to Kath and we got all we got like books to give to the kids. Some of those kids went out with eight or nine new books from Scholastic that we used. Everybody got a Polar Express book. And then we had the CAP um, books. And some of them went out with like 40 and 50 books. 
and we were going to do another one for Easter, but what we've decided to do is we were afraid we couldn't get the books in in time for Easter. We're going to do what's called a dog day this summer thing for the spring, and we're going to do books, and you can bring your pets in, and we're going to do pictures with your pets, and we're going to have you do summer reading. So we're going to kind of get summer reading books ready, and we're kind of hoping that kids will come out with maybe, say, five to ten books that they can read in the summer. So if you notice, we've got a concession stand. If you, when you went to a station, you had to go to a ticket, and you would have your little um, ticket punch, just like you went on the train. And then you got to go to the concession stand for free, which everything was free anyway, but the kids had to go to stations in order to get that free stuff. And Michelle Yancey is going to talk about bird law. As a part of it, all of the uh, teachers agreed to um, incorporate our you know, literacy in each classroom. I teach math. And so um, it's, it's a big thing to try and get them to use proper terminology when it comes to anything, but math especially. They're just not super comfortable with a lot of the words and terminology we use. So trying to um, increase that by putting them up by the room, changing them at each unit as we increase so that they can see, keep seeing those words over and over again as we move through. So we also have changed our library. We have magnetic poetry, and you would think that the kids wouldn't want to do that, but the other day I was in their copy and I even saw the janitor making a poem. <laughs> so I mean, it, it really took off. We also have a scholarship corner where you can kind of go in and get, we just kind of want our library to be used. And if you don't have a bunch of readers in the school, your library's really not used. So we're very, we're, we're changing that. And this is an um, example of a classroom library. And Fridays are silent, sustained reading, and students bring their own choice of reading materials. And then most of the students, I mean, most of the teachers have started acquiring a classroom library. Um, and we also are a poetry out loud school. And this is our superintendent doing a selfie with the Poetry Out Loud group. So you have a class competition, a school competition, and then a state competition. You have to apply to be a Poetry Out Loud school. And you recite a poem in front of your class. Then you recite two in front of the school. And whoever wins the school competition goes straight on to state. And this year there were only 15 high schools in the state who did it. And these kids stand up in front of the entire school and recite two poems. We had a pep rally for them this year. We really built it up. Because, I mean, we bring them out. It is just like American Idol. They have signs for each other and everything. You know, we just kind of really kind of push the whole nerdiness thing of it. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, we also had oral storytelling, and the ninth graders went to see 12th Night and Kentucky Studies. Sorry. Okay, do that for one minute, 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> Alright, uh, <laughs> uh, the new social studies standards for Kentucky require that you can, you know, <coughs> Kentucky history, geography, uh, and government, and so forth. And so we implemented a new class this year, and it's Kentucky studies, and I teach it. It basically takes the curriculum where the elementary school left off and continues with it further. And so we purchased a couple of sets of books. Um, our textbook was the Kentucky History of Kentucky by Clodder and Clodder. And it primarily focuses on Kentucky history from statehood up to the Civil War. And we recently, well, back in November, I guess, took a trip to Camp Nelson. And that's one of the pictures you saw from what, our field trip. Camp Nelson is a Union um, supply depot from the Civil War era. And we took a group of about 26 kids there. And so they're actually getting to see places that <laughs> we've read about in some of these books. And it was really neat. Uh, if you're not familiar with Camp Nelson, it's about 25 miles outside of Lexington. It's a 525-acre park. It is now on the National Registry, and it contains Kentucky's largest collection of Civil War artifacts. And our kids got to see some of those artifacts and, and you know, see things up close and personal. I'll just get those pictures. That's a journalism trip. These are some of the vocabulary activities that we do. Evidently, we did a lot of stuff. We have the same path.